All right. Good afternoon. Thank you all for joining us today. We're wanting to update you, um, like we said, every Tuesday and Friday at 12 p.m. We're excited today that we are uh, have a phone line to dial into uh, so that people that don't have um, internet capacity or a computer or um, aren't on Facebook can finally join us. So thank you all very much for your patience on that. We're very excited that we've got um, more people on today uh, via the phone. So. Uh, I want to also thank you for all your questions. We'll get to those um, pretty quickly here, but I do want to um, just talk about the conversations I've been having with our hospitals, with some of our infectious disease specialists, with our emergency management coordinators. Um, I've been in touch with FEMA this week. Um, we really are doing a good job here in Northeastern Pennsylvania, Lackawanna County. It is working that we are staying home. We have to keep staying home. We really are seeing that bearing out in the numbers that we aren't seeing a, a flood of cases in the way that we, we may have had we not been so aggressive in the last few weeks by staying home. So please, please keep doing that. Um, it's really saving lives. It's truly, truly saving lives. And we've got to continue to keep at it. It's, this is like we've talked about a really long road, but uh, it really, really is working. So um, Still, we do not have um, a lot of tests. This is a nationwide issue. Uh, our hospitals and our emergency management coordinators are in constant touch and trying to, to make sure that we're, we're in, there in line when there are more tests um, that are more or different tests that come out. However, right now that's, that's not there. And so it's still, still the guidance is if you feel symptoms, uh, call that primary care, care physician, call 1-877-PA-HEALTH called Geisinger at 570-284-3657. We're still unfortunately uh, at that stage where we don't have a lot of tests. I know it's very frustrating. Um, there's a huge impact for, for us all, for every everywhere down the chain. Um, you know, we have people that are people that are out there that could be at work, um, but are self-quarantining even though they don't have the virus, but we have no way to know if they have it or not. We have people out there we know that that have it that don't realize that they have it because you can be asymptomatic. I realize how frustrating this is. Um, those hospitals are doing everything they can. The emergency management chain is doing everything they can. Um, so continue to call those lines. What I can say though is that the hospitals, Geisinger Regional, um, Moses Taylor, they are ready. They have had these extra weeks to prepare because of you because you stayed home, because you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, because we're all physical and social distancing, we haven't seen the, the urgency in, in, these, uh, in these hospitals yet. We might still see it. We're definitely still climbing a steep hill. That, that curve is still going up and we're, we're definitely not at a peak. We're nowhere near a peak in Lackawanna County, but we, we are ready, the, the hospitals are ready. They are confident in their preparedness, they're confident in their levels of PPE right now, they're confident in their number of beds, they're confident in their number of ventilators. So it's very important that, that you know that, that you can go to sleep tonight being proud of the, the hospitals in your area, in your city, right here in the heart of Scranton. So I want you to know that, that we are ready, but we are still very, very anxious and we're preparing, the hospitals are preparing. I, 24 hours a day, all of all of our healthcare workers that are on the front lines there, we could not be more grateful. You know, so many of you out there are living with uh, people on the front lines, those healthcare workers, and you probably haven't gotten to see or at least definitely not touch each other in a while. And thank you for that sacrifice. It's it's really hard for everyone right now, but it is it is working. So we're confident on on some of those items. I think in a way that that we are we can be proud of, but we've got to hold steady. We've got to hold firm because we're we're really just right here and we have a long way to go. And the next couple of weeks, next two, three weeks are absolutely crucial. Um, one of the big things that we got asked on Tuesday and in the subsequent days is a, how can I help? Which is exactly what this community is all about. How can I help? So we've got a couple of blood drives going that we want to announce. Uh, giving blood is very, very important right now. We of course have to be physical distancing when you give blood. So these, um, these entities are making sure that you're making appointments but I wanna give you the information. So um, the Red Cross is 1-800-RED-CROSS. You can schedule an appointment with the Red Cross at 1-800-RED-CROSS or redcrossblood.org. Uh, there are a couple of community drives. 
the Rail Riders Blood Drive. They're doing one, um, looks like today, starting right now at noon. Um, so you can go down to PNC Fields and uh, get your blood drawn, which would be fantastic. You'll get a souvenir item from the Rail Riders, which is fantastic. So head on down there this afternoon if you're able to, if you're physically able to give blood, we, we do need it in this region. Um, Debbie Dominic, Lackawanna County Commissioner, has worked with the Red Cross and the Peckville Assembly of God to set up an emergency drive on April 16th. Um, that's uh, at 3364 Scranton Carbondale Highway in Blakely. So again, 1-800-RED-CROSS um, can link you to all those resources, but that's one way that we can all help is by giving blood. Um, another piece is the, the food aid. We of course um, are seeing across the country, but really a lot here in Scranton, an uptick in the need for, for food. And as we've been saying, that's okay. Raise your hand, go to those drives, get that food. But we do need help uh, at those distributions and we do need help getting um, meals to people that can't leave their homes, whether it's their at risk population or that they don't have a car. So Meals on Wheels, um, they need help. They don't need drivers right now. They need help sanitizing the materials and vans in the afternoons. So what I like about this is it's very, very specific. If you have time in the afternoon, and you would be willing to help sanitize those vans for those deliveries to help get that food to our seniors, um, that would be very helpful. You can call 570-346-2421. Again, Meals on Wheels needs your help, 570-346-2421. United Neighborhood Centers also is looking for volunteers. That's for driving, uh, delivering meals. If you would like to volunteer to do that, we'd really appreciate it. You can call Jessica at 570-346. 0759 extension 109. Uh, those are great opportunities um, to help. We really are seeing, like I said, an increase in people that, that need help and that's okay. We're so happy that we have such a fantastic fabric of social services in our community already. But they, those, those resources are and continue to, to need uh, our help and support. Um, so we're excited to be able to continue to update you on ways you can help. If you're on the other side of it and you need something, um, dial 211, that's the most efficient way. Uh, we have a couple of things to announce in terms of giveaways. Uh, April 7th, the Friends, of the Friends of the Poor Easter Basket giveaway, April 7th, 10 to five at Scranton High School. Uh, you can register on site and it's drive-through only. Uh, they also, Monday through Friday, um, the food pantries at Jackson Terrace and Valley View Terrace are open nine to 12. So food pantries at Jackson Terrace in Valley View Terrace, um, Monday through Friday, nine to noon. Um, okay. And then, sorry, on the Red Cross, um, you can call the Red Cross number for both of those blood drives. So calling the Red Cross is the best way. If you have questions or if you wanna donate blood, that's the, the best way to go about that. Um, in terms of the city um, with updates for the city services. So we are doing everything we can to make sure that we protect our finances. We um, like, like all of the, the businesses, every family has impacted this in different ways. The city is no exception. We're making um, difficult decisions here, but I, I wanna clarify that there are no furloughs in the, in the firefighting force. No firefighter has been furloughed. Every single firefighter is working. Um, so we are full at full staffing and are ready for any and all emergencies that might arise in terms of fire. We are taking temperatures daily at the stations and um, we have received um, additional uh, PPE from the county emergency management, um, and we are doing well on that front. Um, we're continually disseminating um, the CDC guidance among all of our departments across the city. Um, we're staying clear or current with all of that evolving information, and our staff is safe, and we are providing for them uh, the materials that they need. Uh, we've been working with our partners in the community to help out whatever their unmet needs are. That includes the hospitals. We're in daily communication with the hospitals, trying to help them fill the gaps um, when there are materials they need that we, they're having trouble sourcing. So we've gotten some stethoscopes to Moses Taylor, for example. Um, it's, it's just really a community effort here. It's all hands on deck, and we appreciate everybody who's helping us with that effort. Um, let's see. This continue, we're continuing to collect masks through the Masked Bandits effort. At, you can deliver those masks to the firehouses and we will get those out to where they need to go. Since they're fabric, we're trying to distribute, uh, we're working with the Lackawanna County Medical Society 
um, and they're making sure that those get uh, where, where they need to go to make sure that we're protecting all of as many people in the community as possible. Uh, and we continue to plan for the next phases of the pandemic. Um, it of course includes operational plans for distribution of PPE for EMS, first responders. Um, and we you might have seen in the newspaper today that there's been planning on going for the past month um, between the city, the county, um, and the hospitals um, preparing for if we need um, additional alternative healthcare sites that those sites are will be quickly made available and um, the hospitals are well aware of that and they know that they can uh, use those if needed. So that communication is going on constantly. It's been going on for, I think, sadly, we're at, I almost at a full month now, I think, in, in truly fighting this. And we're really hopeful that the alternative care sites won't be necessary. Um, they're not necessary yet. And that's because you guys are doing a great job by staying home. So please, please keep doing that. Um, I have seen a couple concerns out there. People are getting invited to house parties. That is not helping. That is not saving lives. If you are inviting each other over to your houses, that's not staying home. That is spreading disease. So please, please, you've got to do that virtual house party, call each other, go on Zoom to have your party. My family, we had a, a, our second uh, family birthday party via Zoom last night. Um, it, you just cannot be going over to the neighbor's house right now, even though it seems harmless. Um, this morning on my way to the office, I went into the driveway um, and to wave to my nephews, good morning. I haven't seen them in months, actually. I mean, I've seen them, I haven't actually physically been in the same room with them for months now. Um, that's unfortunately just the situation we're in. So no house parties, please, please stay home. This is a long road, I know, but we cannot be doing that. It jeopardizes everyone. It jeopardizes the progress that we've made in terms of not seeing as high numbers as could have been. We're gonna, we're gonna keep going up. We know cases are gonna increase, but in order to stop that, in order to flatten that curve, we've gotta keep staying home, so please do that. Um, so with uh, regards to police, and speaking of that, we've gotta keep our police safe. If you, police have to come and break up your party, guess what, you're endangering the police force and that is going to hurt, um, that hurts all around and there. We need them out there. We need them healthy. So with police, our overall calls for service are still dropping. However, we have seen an increase in calls to our department um, to check very on various businesses. Um, most of the outcomes of those checks resulted in the business being exempt from the closure order. In the rare circumstances where the business is not exempt, uh, Scranton PD is mirroring the state police policy. Um, we first educate the business owners on the closure order. Um, some of the exemption categories, as we know, have been vague and it's tough. I mean, the, the state has been working so hard to sift through all these exemptions, but there's just so many different factors to consider. Um, and so some citizens are still under the impression if the police are called that they are going to be immediately shut down. That's not the intent of the governor's order. We're trying to work with these business owners. Uh, the true intent is to gain voluntary compliance through education, through communication, and we're not using force to close a business right away. Um, if a business does need to be closed under that order, we'll first the police will first instruct that business. If they refuse to close, then a citation will be issued, um, and then we would go from there. But we're it's really about education. But but do please still um, still flag those things. Um, please do not call nine one one. These are not emergencies. So call the police department or you can always call 570-348-4101 um, or our code enforcement department. Um, we can, you, I don't have that number right on my screen right now, um, but you can call code enforcement as well. So do not call 911 if it's not an emergency. We really have to keep those lines free, um, but we're happy, happy to check out the, the issues that you might have or could think that you think that there might be a problem out there whether it's police or code enforcement, um, but please, please, please don't call 911. Um, but we are fully staffed to go out there and make those checks for you and make sure that everybody's um, understanding what the rules are, understanding what the orders are. As we know, this the stay at home order is at least through April 30th. So this is our new normal. And uh, we appreciate the community engaging with us and, and keeping an eye on things. Um, but please don't call 911. And um, just wanna make sure that you realize that business owners are for the most part doing what they're, they're, they're trying to do right, do right by the order. It's gonna be a warning first and trying to work and educate those, those business owners. In terms of parks, uh, the parks are open, but we are asking residents, please practice that physical distancing. If you go out with the family, um, you know, don't, don't take everybody all at the same time because then it's hard for you to distance between other families that are out there. Uh, we want you to recreate, we want you to get some exercise, but we really have to be physically distanced from each other. 
and no team sports. I don't want to have to take the basketball hoops down. Please don't make me do that. Um, it would break my heart and my husband's heart. We love basketball in our family. Um, if you and your friend want to go shoot hoops, just the two of you, great. Uh, not your friend. Your some. If your friend, if you and your friend are roommates and you've been living together, then do it. Maybe your sibling, um, maybe your spouse, uh, but not no team sports. We can't have we can't have groups of people meeting up at the basketball court to play. So we posted those signs. Um, we posted those that caution tape around the play equipment. Please heed that. Um, we will have to take the basketball hoops down if we still continue to see people playing uh, playing the games of pickup. So is that a I, believe me, I wish we were watching March Madness this week. I am a huge NBA fan and I, I really wish that we were watching that. So um, unfortunately, just just please be mindful. Don't don't make me take those hoops down. Uh, we also want to just let you know that the Parks Department is working to sanitize um, the playground equipment and everything that's out there, but we ask that you stay off of the physical equipment. Uh, we continue to post um, our information about mental health services. If you if you know you were somebody that you love or you're worried about them, um, make sure that you get those numbers to them. We have them listed on our website. We have them listed um, on our Facebook. Um, so National Suicide Prevention Line, 1-800-273-8255, 1-800-273-8255. That's the National Suicide Prevention Line. Um, the Crisis text line, if you want to text, you can text TALK, T-A-L-K, to 741741. That's another way that you can get crisis support. Um, there's disaster distress helpline is 1-800-985-5990. Um, we talked a lot uh, last on Tuesday about um, the situation with um, potential domestic violence issues and uh, want to reiterate out there that Women's Resource Center is there to help you. They are at 1-800-257-5765, 1-800-257-5765. Um, an alternative number, also the Women's Resource Center, 570-346-4671, 570-346-4671. Please utilize those resources if, um, if you need to. That's what they're there for, and we're, we're trying to get that information out as, as widely as we can. Just like with the social piece and the, the food aid, use these resources, that is what they're there for. Uh, in terms of business assistance, uh, last night, uh, this morning, rather, rather, the Paycheck Protection Program um, opened up. Uh, if you are uh, a small business um, or a nonprofit or a sole proprietorship, an independent contractor or a self-employed individual, you need to work with your bank. You have to have an existing relationship with the bank to be able to access this money at this time. So call your bank to, to access that program. Um, I know it's there's a lot of moving parts with it. We're not exactly sure how it's going to work. The banks don't even know. I know that even the bigger banks aren't quite sure. It's a huge program that hopefully, hopefully is able to help many, many of our entities here in Lackawanna County and Scranton but you do need to work through your individual bank. So please contact your own lender and ask them um, for help making that application. Okay. Uh, something that came up uh, this week where uh, Senator Casey announced the breakdown of what Scranton can expect from uh, recent bills uh, passed in Washington. Um, there's $1.6 million for the community development block grant program an emergency solutions block grant for $800,000 totaling about $2.5 million, um, which is very exciting, it's great. Um, it's important to note that these allocations are earmarked for recovery operations for our city and our Office of Economic Development. Um, they're not relief, they're not current today money that I just have in my hand to use. I wish I did, um, but these are funds that are going to be available for recovery it's not immediate relief funds that I have. So I just didn't want any confusion out there that the city just got an influx of $2.5 million in cash that we can just use right now, um, unfortunately. Um, but but uh, that is coming. We're very grateful to Senator Casey for continuing to advocate for us down in Washington. Um, but that that money, um, we're still, we still, in terms of relief, we've, we've, we have a lot of paperwork to do. Our teams are working really hard to document everything, make sure that we are getting as much money as possible when it comes from, from FEMA and Pima. Uh, but that $2.5 million is for recovery efforts. That's a forward-looking um, bucket of money, but we're very appreciative for it. 
uh, wanted to announce that the Pennsylvania uh, Humanities Council is offering pop-up grants to small nonprofits for virtual projects, very cool, to help the community understand the humanities. You can contact Maureen McGuigan at the Lackawanna County Arts and Culture Department. So again, um, pop-up grants for small nonprofits. It's um, mcguiganm at lackawannacounty.org uh, to learn more or get assistance in applying. Uh, so M-C-G-U-I-G-A-N-M -M, as in Maureen at LackawannaCounty.org. We'll put that on the website and Facebook as well. Um, just a few more things and we'll get to questions. The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania statewide now, that stay at home order is now statewide. Um, it goes, goes at least through April 30th. A uh, few other things to, to note. So the federal, state and um, the city of Scranton, the tax deadline, um, is now July 15th. That's for your income tax in the city of Scranton, the business privilege mercantile tax. Um, the school board has yet to approve that on their end. Um, we're working with them, uh, but the city, the city itself, that earned income tax, that business privilege mercantile is in line with state and federal is um, delayed till July 15th. We're following that. We don't want uh, you out there to have the burden of trying to file for your taxes right now with everything else that's going on in all of our lives. Um, if you have the time to do it and sit home and do your taxes, which um, is very important, that's great. You certainly can, can pay your taxes at this point, but um, we wanted to make sure that we're in line with the state and federal government to give relief there. Uh, driver's licenses, driver's licenses that expired before April 30th now expire um, May 31st. So if you're worried that your license is expiring this month, um, you right now have until May 31st. So don't worry about that right now. Um, the real ID deadline um, that was October of 2020, that is now October 1st, 2021. So another thing that you don't need to, to uh, have on your shoulders at this particular time. So real ID extended election day, the primary in Pennsylvania is now June 2nd. Um, so you can register to vote and apply to vote by mail at uh, www.votespa.com. Uh, and of course, um, Last but not least on this list is the unemployment piece. If you've lost your job due to COVID, you can file for unemployment at uc.pa.gov. Um, I know that we've seen record unemployment across the country and we here in Lackawanna County, we here in Scranton uh, are, are really gonna be hit by these job losses. So I want you to know that the city, we are trying to work as hard as we can to make sure that those those safety nets are in place um, and working to, working to make sure that the, the food aid is out there, making sure um, that we're continuing to get that social service support. So if you have questions, if you have um, things that you need that, that you don't think are, you're unsure that they'll be met, you can always email us at Scranton311 at scrantonpa.gov. You can call us at 570-348-4101 and we will try to get, um, get you what you need. And also it's great for us because there are things out there that are happening or might be happening that, that we don't know of. You know, we're not out there physically right now, which is a real challenge um, as I sit here with you today. The fact that I, I'm in a not in a position where I can just kind of be out in the community like I normally would, it really helps us for you guys to get in touch with us and let us know what your questions and concerns are. So please continue to do that. Um, please also respond to the census. Uh, we're at 38% of city residents responding. That's a little bit behind the state average. We really want to get that up. So. Um, go to my2020census.gov, or you can call 844-330-2020. Again, to call um, to respond to the census, 844-330-2020. The census is safe. The Census uh, Bureau is not going to share your information with other government, um, with other federal government agencies. It's safe to, it's safe to, and we really need it because we need that funding. We need you to count so that we can get funding for you and your family in the next 10 years here in Scranton. So please, please do that. Okay, so sorry for so many updates. I just wanna make sure that we're getting, getting the word out to you guys and the different resources that are available. So uh, Glenda asked, are hospitals ready for this? It's probably the best question you can think of uh, to ask right now. And right now the answer is yes. Right now, if we all continue to stay at home, if we all continue to respect each other, and respect these rules, not have those basketball games, not have those house parties, um, not go to the store every single day, not take the whole family on the shopping trip, we continue to do these things. Um, we continue to 
you know, if we need gas, go get that gas, but sanitize before and after you use that gas pump, before and after you use your credit card in the machine. Um, if we continue to do those things, then then yes, the hospitals are ready. Um, they, I think that what we have here in Lackawanna County, in Scranton, we, we really do have tremendous health care. We, we always have had, and we are very lucky that those administrators here have been on top of this for a long time. And they're learning from New York City. New York City, you know, it's really tough what's going on there, but we have to remember that New York City is an extraordinarily dense population. Um, it's millions and millions of people, and that is not the type of the type of density that we have here in Scranton. So while we need to continue to do everything, we should not have the the level of of emergency that they've had in New York City. So please, um, you know. Remember that. Remember that we're not we're not New York City in that way. Many of us probably live here because it's not New York City, and it isn't as dense. And a lot of people don't either love it or you don't in a city like New York with that dense population. So we've got to continue to be careful. We have to continue to stay at home, but we we shouldn't see that level of emergency here. Um, hospitals are ready. The hospitals, um, from my calls with them. You know, they've got the beds, they've got the ventilators, they, they currently have the PPP. Of course, they're always, um, they're always taking more. Um, Amber asked specifically about what our hospitals are doing in terms of PPE. Um, they, they're, they're confident right now that they have what they need. If you have a source, we're trying to continue to source them. If you have a source that you know of, um, you can let us know and we can get that to them. We can, make, we can get that to their operations centers, uh, but they, they, they do feel confident right now. And Kathleen asked about why is there a difference between Luzerne and Lackawanna County's numbers? Is there less testing? Are residents staying at home more? Um, all of the situation is evolving, as we know. Um, I don't, I don't, I can't speak to the testing difference. I, I just know that everyone's having an issue with the lack of testing. I think that people in Lackawanna County have been staying home longer than maybe parts of Luzerne County. When you think about Luzerne County, especially Southern Luzerne, that's got a lot of traffic um, in and out of Lehi the Lehigh Valley, which has a lot of traffic in and out of New York, a lot of traffic in and out of Philadelphia. Lackawanna being just a little bit north um, and away from some of those population centers, I do think that has made a big difference. I can't speak to the testing, Kathleen, and I, I'm sorry for that. Uh, we need more tests. I, that's what I was on the phone with FEMA about this morning. Um, you know, there's that that testing when it does become available, we're going to be be pushing for it, and we continue to push for it. It's not here yet, but I do think the proximity to and just the nature of the commerce and the commuting between Lackawanna, or excuse me, Lackawanna and Luzerne, uh, has made a difference. So, so again, please stay home. If you have come in from New York City at any point, please self isolate. Um, I wish we had the testing. We all wish that we had the testing that test you, so that we could let you go to the store once in a while, but we really we just don't have that testing. So please stay home if you've come in from New York, please stay home for all of you um, out there. Um, Jason, okay, what actions has Scranton or the county taken for additional hospital space and ventilators? So, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that hospital space, uh, those uh, alternative locations are ready if needed. Uh, they're available if needed, the hospitals, uh, know, know where they are and know that if they need them, they're there. We're in constant communication and, and thankfully those haven't been necessary yet. Um, in terms of ventilators right now, the, the hospital systems here are confident in their, in their uh, numbers of ventilators. There are efforts across the region that I, I've been working with the Chambers of Commerce and our um, Ben Franklin partners and our, all of our business community to source, source potential uh, help if needed on the ventilators, but right now, the event, the hospitals feel confident. Um, okay, so a few more items here. So a resident asking how we can get more testing done. Um, we continue to push for that. We continue to ask um, my you know, fire chief Lucas, police chief Graziano. They're always in touch with their channels. I'm in touch with my channels and we're, we're if there is more testing that becomes available, we'll know. Um, the healthcare, it's really through the healthcare system though that that testing becomes available. It's really through the hospitals um, that, that that would come through. So hopefully um, at the federal level, they, they get more things up and running and we're, we're able to see that. But for right now, 
Um, we just have to continue to call those lines if you have symptoms. And um, the only real testing that ha is happening is in patients uh, at the hospitals. So I'm sorry that that is the case, uh, but I'm not gonna sugarcoat this stuff and, and tell you that something's coming when I can't guarantee that. Uh, so it's still, it still really remains an issue, but our hospitals are on it. We are on it and doing everything we can. Um, okay, so let's see. Brian asked, why is Greyhound still running? So the Greyhound buses, um, I as mayor don't have the ability to close the borders and neither does Governor Wolf. That has to happen at the, that has to happen at the state level. Um, I know uh, Representative Cartwright wrote a letter to the CEO of Greyhound asking them to stop service. Um, I've been on the phone with Greyhound on a regular basis, keeping in touch with them. Uh, they have reduced their runs immensely as of, I think it was Wednesday. Uh, the average of people coming in on that one bus from Greyhound each day was five people. Um, for anyone who's coming in from New York, again, please, please self-isolate. Um, I don't have a safe way to stop Greyhound from coming um, to the city. Um, I, I'm not going to put my, uh, my first responders, my police or my fire um, at the station and try to arrest the Greyhound bus driver. That's not a productive use of time, nor do I think that's um, the safest thing that we need to be, should be doing right now. So we're in very constant touch with them. Um, the numbers are very low. People, we can't shut the border. People are gonna come, they're gonna drive in. Uh, for the most part, I believe 99% of the traffic, if not more, would be, would be drive through personal cars. So we're, we're in touch with them and those numbers are very, very low. People in New York are also sheltering in place. They are, they are heeding these warnings. And if you have come from there, please, please stay home. Uh, let's see, should there, for Glenda asks, should there be protective, me protective measures on people going to Lowe's and Home Depot? There are too many people at once. Um, that's, a, that's interesting. Um, so Lowe's and Home Depot are private businesses, but um, let, me, let me check in to that and we can see. I think those, part of Lowe's is in Scranton, part is in Dixon City, Home Depot is in Dixon City, but we'll connect with Dixon City today and see um, see if that's something that we need to, to check in on, okay? Uh, Todd asked about constructive, act, excuse me, construction activities. Um, are construction and activities being prohibited in line with the state's closing of non-essential businesses um, or is that a separate city prohibition? Uh, will this be lifted when the state allows all businesses to reopen? Um, so Todd, I, there's so, there's a, it's really complex in terms of what's allowed and what isn't. So. I would ask you um, to reach out to our code enforcement department. Todd, if you can um, email the Scranton 311 at scrantonpa.gov or um, give us a call at 570-348-4101, we can connect you to um, our code enforcement department and go through what's allowed and what isn't. I think that's probably the best, um, the best thing there. But I will say that any non-essential construction is we should not be doing right now. I do believe that the non-essential, the cosmetic pieces especially are prohibited. I know that there are things that, um, non-emergency things that I would love to be out there doing right now. I would love now that the, now that the, we have good weather, not today, but now that we have good weather, I was hoping that we would be painting all of our uh, crosswalks, painting all of our lines down the road again, um, working to fill potholes, working on our street signs project. There's a, many, many things that um, I thought we'd be doing by April 1st and we aren't. So. Um, a lot of those construction activities are not okay, but connect with our code enforcement department for those details and anyone out there with questions, you know, code enforcement's the way to go there. Don't, please don't be calling, you know, 911 or um, jamming up those lines for those questions. But Todd, that's a really good question. And I know it's an ongoing, um, an ongoing issue. So uh, something I think to go back to, um, to go back to the question, this isn't unique to Lowe's and Home Depot. Um, going to the store is not a recreational activity that we can do right now. If you want to um, go to the park, you know, with your very like, one person in your family and walk around, that's fine. But you can't just go to Home Depot to walk around, go to Lowe's to walk around. It's not, it's not something to, uh, it's not something to just do for fun. So please, please don't be doing that. Um, 
that is a con yeah so that's a concern same with the grocery stores it's not an activity that we can be doing right now we got to figure out other stuff to do puzzles at home talk to your grandma um do your taxes apply or respond to the census be doing and at a, a park if you if you're using that physical distancing but please don't be going to the stores needlessly okay so Shelly is concerned about DPW workers. How are they being safeguarded? We have, we have the, the proper gloves, sanitizers, wipes, um, sanitation supplies, PPE for our DPW workers. Um, they are safe. We have those protocols in place, those CDC guidelines that they, they are always supposed to follow, but uh, we've been talking uh, with them about those guidelines for hand washing and hand sanitizing since uh, February. So. Um, the DPW workers, sorry, the Department of Public Works workers, our sanitation workers, um, our highway, our highway workers, um, those folks that are out there in the shop um, that are working on our trucks and making sure that we can continue to keep our our city safe and clean. Thank you to all of them. We are we, we do have the supplies that you need, um, and we are very 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 appreciative for the work that you do day in and day out. That's a, a, a huge importance. Same with our parks department. Um, keeping those parks safe is is really, really important to us. Um, let me just check for some other questions. I have to go on my uh, my other device here. Let's see. Um, let's see. Okay, so we have a couple questions about taxes. Um, Barb asked about the city and school tax deadline. City has extended uh, the school district. Um, the board is still uh, looking at the tax deadline for their portion, which is that um, that one percent of the uh, of the earned income tax. Uh, Linda asked a question about paying previous year taxes. Um, there. Northeast Revenue said they have to be done in person. Is there a remote method? On our website, um, Linda, if you can email or call us on that at our numbers, uh, we'll make sure that we get you the right information. There are no taxes being collected here in person at the city right now. So, um, We'll make sure that make sure that you get the right information there. So let me let me get a couple of your live questions here. Um, can you address that the Pennsylvania unemployment system is blatantly not working? So I don't have um, that's that's a state system and not not a city system. Um, I know that the lines have been backed. I mean the the phone lines have been backed up. Um, I know that they're working on that. Uh, I will I will call today and see if there's anything that I can find out in terms of timing um, to make sure that money is getting to all of us um, as quickly as possible. Um, what you can know, what I've I've been reassured that it's not that you won't get the money. I, I realize that there is a lag though if you haven't been able to get through. So let me make a call on that. Um, Karen asks, once the state home request is order over, will there be a FEMA emergency preparedness training for volunteers as a neighborhood group. Um, that's a great idea, Karen. Um, we can certainly work with uh, Pima and FEMA to try to work out more long-term training and long-term preparedness. Um, as, as we get into this new normal, if some of this crisis, crisis pitch ever, um, ever abates, uh, maybe we can do some of that in the, in the near term. Um, so we are working so hard i want everyone to know that we are all and you are all everyone is working so hard in this time and we deeply deeply appreciate all of the healthcare workers all of their families our police officers our firefighters our sanitation and um and highways workers you guys are on the front lines of this as well we thank you and your families for that um i continue to thank all of the employees of the city um, a lot of you are making sacrifices um, right now, and I am deeply appreciative of that. And thank you for your understanding of how we we have to protect um, we have to protect the the city finances so that we can keep everything going. And um, that's a that's a hard 
hard and harsh reality. And I um, appreciate your, your patience and your working with us on that. Um, the grocery store employees, restaurant employees, all of those um, services that are still open and still running, thank you for being open. And um, to all the patrons out there, thanks for helping keep them going. But please be uh, respectful of what they're doing for you and make sure that you keep your distance when you're at the grocery store, you keep your distance when you're at, um, at a takeout place. You know, you, if you can wear gloves, if you can um, use that sanitizer, that'd be great. There's a lot of mixed um, messaging out there about masks right now. I'm not gonna pretend that I have answers that even the federal government um, can't give, but uh, those of you who are wearing masks, you know, I suppose it can't hurt. Um, I, I can't say that it's, a, it's an ironclad um, response and, and something that will protect everyone, but um, you know, wearing a fabric mask, wearing a, a mask, is, is not gonna hurt anything, but I, I don't want any, everyone to think that, that you have to wear a mask when you go outside. That doesn't seem to be, the, that's not the guidance. Um, if you do, however, if you have a stockpile of N95 masks for some reason, um, I would ask that you, you get in touch. Um, you can take those to our firehouses. You could put them, uh, take them to our firehouses. Uh, we could get those up to the hospitals. Please don't go straight to the hospitals, but um, any N95 masks that you don't currently need um, the healthcare system really does need those. They're okay for right now, like they've said, but cannot hurt to have give them more. So um, please take those to firehouses if you do have those, um, if there's any resources that you have. And you can always call us and, and ask that question. Um, if it's something that might be useful, we're happy to, to guide you where, where um, we, we best see fit. So we continue to try to get um, all the information to you that we can. Um, thank you for being in touch with us, like I said, Write those emails, make those phone calls, ask these questions. Let me see if there's any more on Facebook. Um, we just, we wanna do this every few days so that we're keeping you updated and, um, and make sure that we're uh, able to, let's see. Okay, so I have an update from Colts. Um, thank you, Gretchen. Uh, Colts is closing the Lackawanna Transit Center on Monday. That means the lobby will be closed. The buses will continue to run on their compressed schedules Monday through Friday, but that lobby at Colts is closed beginning on Monday. So thank you, Gretchen, for that. Um, okay, Moses asks, why don't you hire people to sanitize the city? Um, I'm not quite sure what, um, what that means. We still have our public works department is fully operational. Um, and they are continuing to pick up the garbage. They're continuing to, um, to go out every single day to make sure that the streets are, streets are clean from debris and from garbage. So I'm not, I'm not quite sure what you mean about sanitizing. Um, unfortunately, right now, I, you know, we're not in a financial position to be uh, able to, to have a broad service. I'm not sure exactly what the question is, but Moses, if you want to elaborate on that, if you want to email or call, we're happy to talk through what you mean. And maybe you have an idea we haven't thought of yet. So we are happy to take ideas and happy to do that. So um, with that, please, please stay home. It is working. Um, if this is the beginning of our uptick in Lackawanna County and Scranton, um, nothing that I say here today about preparedness, it means that we're not um, still working network is in that number. It's probably an update since I, I got online here. Um, that number is going to continue to go up. So we really have to realize we're still at the beginning of this. This is the beginning, not the end. So please continue to stay home. You are saving lives by staying home. Staying home means saving lives. And we will continue to try to do everything we can for you. Continue to send us your, your information, your questions, and we are available to try to be as helpful and take your ideas as well. So thank you all. Um, try to have a good weekend. Uh, keep those spirits up. Make those phone calls to your loved ones. Um, do those fun things um, that you can from home. Um, try to, I guess, see the silver lining and, and you know, get some of those projects done around the house that maybe you would have never otherwise gotten to. But um, this is still, this is still the, the beginning of this and we appreciate everything you're doing and um, thank you.